Welcome to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. I am your host, Sherry T., and this is the best day of your life because God is in control. Our show today is Conversation with Cousins from a Christian Perspective, featuring Eddie J. and your host, Sherry T. The Believer for Life Christian Clothing Brand is now on Amazon.com forward slash Believer for Life. Welcome to this episode of Conversation with Cousins. We hope you are encouraged, inspired by the words that we share with you today. Good morning, good morning, or good evening, good evening, whatever time that you are watching this. Again, this is Conversation with Cousins from a Christian Perspective, and this is episode number 12. Can you believe it? <laughs> uh, episode 12, uh, that means we've been at it around three months. Uh, we've been in this around three months. Uh, nobody would have known this but the Lord. Uh, so again, we are grateful and thankful that God has chosen us uh, for this uh, specific task uh, in this podcast. And again, we are grateful and thankful for all of you who have taken time to watch, those of you who have liked, those of you who have shared it to your friends and family members and coworkers. Uh, even your family and your foes. We thank you. Uh, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts uh, for taking the time to uh, be a part of the conversation. Uh, my name is Eddie J, and my cousin's name is Gary T. And I, again, I am I am right with my cousin. You know, I tell y'all this week in and week out, we're so excited about you being here. We're excited about we're being here. We're just glad that you have chosen us just 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 to listen to what the Lord has put in our hearts to share with you. So we want you to continue to pray for us as we pray for you and knowing that the best is yet to come. Matter of fact, the best starts right now. So I want y'all to go. I, w- I want y'all to listen intently at what we're saying today because it's going to be a, p- a powerful session. Again, we're going to pick it up uh, where, where we left off last week. And I'm going to go ahead and let my cousin go ahead and, and, and impart that information to you. All right. So we left off on in Romans chapter 12, mm-hmm. Romans chapter 12, verses, uh, we had verse 14. We covered verses uh, 9, I believe, through verse 13 on last week. Uh, so today we are picking up at verse 14. And verse 14 uh, uh, starts off heavy. Uh, it starts off heavy. Uh, we dealt with it in Matthew, uh, mm-hmm. but we're going to deal with it again since it's in the text. Uh, it says, uh, uh, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. That again, that is heavy, 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 heavy. Uh, so we are not to have a hateful attitude towards anyone, not even those who persecute you. Oh, go ahead and repeat that again. Use that person. Say that again. We are not to have a hateful attitude towards anyone, not even those who persecute you. And I know that's hard. That's hard. I know it. I know it's not easy because in our own nature is to retaliate. Oh. If somebody do something to us, uh, our, our human nature is to get them back. Don't let them do that to you. Don't let them get away with it. Uh, but he says, bless those who persecute you, uh, bless those and do not curse. Mm-hmm. So again, the whole do not curse, uh, Jesus spoke from this same heart as we dealt with in Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 46. For he says, if you love those who love you, uh, uh, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that, ain't, that ain't really nothing. That, that's mm-hmm. nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. If you love those who love you, mm-hmm. uh, he says even the tax collectors do that. Some text mm-hmm. says even the pagans or the sinners love those who love them. Uh, so again, when we do that, he is telling us 
that we're not doing uh, anything out of the norm. Mm. Uh, so, so that Jesus uh, surpassing greatness uh, of the love that, that he has in us is shown that we can extend our love towards our enemies. Mm. But here, this is the one that gets me, those who persecute you. Mm. And let me say this, uh, we expect persecution on the outside but we get persecuted in the inside as well. Ooh. Yeah, I went there because I went. <laughs> went oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we are we we expect uh, persecution uh, from those on the outside or outside of Christ. We expect that. That's what. That's all they know to do. Mm. But the 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 hard thing is when persecution come in house. Uh, those who say they love Jesus, those who say uh, they're on the lower side, uh, 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 but even uh, and, and and Jesus tells us in John sixteen and two uh, that everything that you get attacked from is not going to always be from the outside. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen in the inside, and even when it happens in the inside, you can't treat it no differently than you treat those on the outside. You have to treat them. You got to bless them. You mm. can't curse them. And mm. I know, again, it's hard. It's hard because our flesh want to retaliate. Our flesh want to get back at them. But we have to hold on. Go ahead, cuz. Right, right. You know, you know, cuz, I'm going to have to dive in on the end of that when you talk about that persecution thing and, and talk about this in-house. And I'm going to deal with the church right now because, you know, a lot of people out there right now are dealing with church hurt. Hopefully, those individuals are listening to us today, that they can get their healing. Because when when, when, when those on the inside of you hurt you and, and create something in you, a, a, a form of bitterness where you want to walk away from, from, from being in unity with the believers, all because of that, you've got to go back to the scripture. Don't, you know, it, at the end of the day, it, it really is about love. It really is because yes. ch church hurt ain't no joke. A lot of people are walking around here with church. No, I don't want to be bothered with y'all. Y'all know y'all was all because they, they that persecution came, and and it did it didn't work well with them. They like no, why are they, why are they doing this to me? But you know, at the end of the day, sometimes that persecution needs to come because iron sharpens iron. Iron develops you. That those 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 rough edges begin to become soft when you got to say no you're gonna have to love you're gonna have to love those even in in-house like you said we expect it from the outside yeah they don't they gonna do what they do but when it comes to the inside when it comes to the church when it comes to that church pain you need to know that who are you there for who are you in church for are you in church to, to, to make to make those around you all comfortable like 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 you said earlier Jesus even said, it's easy to love those that love you. It's easy. That's where you walk into those, those cliques in the church. Because I know I ain't going to be bothered with that. No, 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 no. No, no. We need to develop the thing of agape love in deep relationships and understand that, you know what, Lord? Maybe it's something on the inside of me that you're trying to correct. Because not all persecution is, 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 to, is, is, is to make, is, is to kill you. But sometimes yeah. persecution is to grow you. Yeah. And you would grow more in who? The likeness of our Heavenly Father. And, yeah. and, and God will put us under the press to get us to bear those fruits. Those, those, those fruits, those fruits that 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 remain, the long suffering, the endurance, the faithfulness, the love, the joy, the peace. God will put us under the press because Jesus had to go up under the press. Jesus was, per was was persecuted by his own. Yeah, but he still, but he still walked it all the way to the cross. He looked at, it, he said, "But I'm gonna love you anyway." He's right. Like, you, you, we, 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 we we are in the same community, and and I know, I know you're doing. I I know what you're doing to me right now. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing a lot, but I know what you're doing to me right now. But I am going to show you the love of the Father because at the end of the day, each one of us are going to have to come to that place of knowing that Jesus Christ is Lord of our life because it is an eternity that we are all striving for. Yeah. 
eternal life. Not eternal death, but eternal life that we're all striving for. Go ahead, Pastor Pippen. Yeah, yeah, and I want to let me pick it back on this. Uh, uh, yes, uh, and that was a good point that you raised that Jesus experienced hurt amongst his, his own, but he didn't let that detour him for okay. what he was called to do. Amen. I said that to say this a lot of times we allow church hurt to detour us for what God has called us to do. Oh. I had to go there. A, a lot of times we allow the church hurt to stop us from doing what God has called us to do. Uh, and, and let me say it this way. We experience hurt everywhere else. Yes. We experience work hurt. That don't oh. stop us from that job until we get another job. Mm -hmm. uh, we experience hurt within family. Uh, we can't change our family. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we experience hurt in all phases of life. But mm -hmm. when it comes to this thing called church hurt, is that we want to we give up on God. Mm -hmm. But you know what? God doesn't give up on us. Yeah. So why do we give up? Like 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 you said, the only person is trying to stop you from fulfilling God's plan is the enemy. And when yeah. you can discern that, even in church hurt, in your work hurt, when you can discern that, you know to stay put. You know that there's something resonating in you, a seed of not righteousness, a seed of love, to love those who persecute you, to love your enemies. You have to love them. It, it's not it's, it's not even a, it really is not even a choice. It's a command. Love, love your enemies. Love them. Love those that persecute you. Because see, that's working the best out in you. That's working the best out in you. You you develop that agape love, and maybe and maybe that maybe that was Jesus' whole point. The only way you can really develop that the the the, the fullness of God's love is to love those that don't necessarily love you, but to love those that persecute you. To be able to walk through that, say, Lord, you know what? Now I remember the fact. I remember that, but the pain doesn't hurt. Because God is a what healer of the broken heart. Yeah. He's a healer. So so we have to walk this thing out knowing that God has our best interests at heart because he's fulfilling his purpose in us every day. Yeah. Let's take the next two verses. Uh verses uh 15 and 16. Again, we're in Romans 12. Uh it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. So again, he just tells us uh, uh, that we, we, for us to be of the same mind towards one another, in other words, we ought to be considerate of one another. Uh, when one of us uh, uh, is rejoicing, we ought to rejoice. Uh, when one of those who weep, we ought to weep. We ought to, we ought to be considerate uh, for one another uh, instead of hating on one another. Lord, have mercy. Uh, because a lot of times when somebody rejoices, we want to hate on that person in their rejoicing. Right. Uh, God has blessed them for, for whatever it is. Uh, new car, new job, new house, whatever it is. Uh, and, and instead of rejoicing in that, uh, we, we have a lot of people who want to hate in that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we rejoice, just, just remember this. When you rejoice, just know yours coming around the corner. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, mm -hmm. Yours is coming around the corner. So we don't have to hate on one another. And what he is telling us in that 15th passage in that 15 verse, rather, uh, he is telling us we ought to be considerate of one another. Mm -hmm. uh, what somebody's going through, uh, we ought to be there for them. Mm -hmm. uh, when somebody is rejoicing, we ought to be uh, happy for them. So in other words, he is sharing with us uh, that we ought to be considerate uh, with one another. And that he goes on and says it uh, in verse 16, where he says, live in harmony with one another. So how we live in harmony with one another, uh, we are, we got to remember, we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. Yes, yes. And if we can really get that, 
uh, we are our brothers and sisters keeper. Uh, uh, we could be the, the the body of Christ would be so much better if we can get to the point of being bro our brothers and sisters keepers instead of pulling one or other other down because mm -hmm. you think they didn't got a little further down the road than you, so you want to pull them back to where you are. No, rejoice. Yes. Be glad for your brother and sister. Live in harmony with them. And as you live in harmony with them, uh, God will, uh, in his season, take you where you need to go. It right. says, don't be proud. Mm -hmm. Pride is, a. we talked about it before, but mm -hmm. pride is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Don't be proud. Yeah. Uh, instead, associate with the humble. Uh, don't do not be wise in your own estimation. Uh -huh. Don't think better than what you are. Uh -huh. And a lot of times, uh, Jesus has the, uh, uh, Paul, the writer, is reminding us uh, uh, that we need to be humble. Uh -huh. uh, we need to set our uh, things on high thing, which is God, and associate with the humble. And when we do that, we are imitating Jesus. Yes, yes. Again, you hear me? We, you didn't hear me say throughout our conversation uh, that we are reflectors of Christ. Yes. Uh, what, what, what? Uh, the world, what those we come in contact with see mm -hmm. of, they ought to see Christ. Go ahead, cuz. Yeah. 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 We, you know what? Even even when you talk about you know pride, you, you know because we all know. Pride comes from, from 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 the darkness. It comes from the devil's kingdom because that's what got him kicked out. But but when you look at it, just think just think about your ego. If you don't think you got no pride, how how big is your ego? Because you need to leave. You need to put your ego at the door. Leave it at the door because that all all that does is bring is 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 bring um, the the foolishness into the house. And what you try to do, what what, what Paul was telling us. You know what? If y'all gonna come, if y'all gonna do this thing, there are there are uh, several things you need to do. Rejoice, weep, and be considerate. What he's saying, this is the character of Christ. Just like you said, we're just reflectors of Christ. So it it shouldn't be hard for us to do this. And and when he's pointing to what are even our enemies, we we ought we ought to be able to do this or rejoice with them. And with, when they when they being blessed, thank you, Jesus, because. At the end of the day, if you're really praying for your enemies, God is going to have to bless them because that's yeah. what he does. That is his nature. That's what he's called to do. Remember, God is the king of the universe. He's the king. He is the king. And the yeah. king has a provision for each and every one of us. So it should not be hard. We should not be like, well, you know, I got haters. No, no, no. There, should, there are no haters in the kingdom of heaven. There are none. Haters have already been exited out the door. Because Jesus said, we must love. We must love each other. We must love our enemies. In order to do this, we must understand there are times of there are times of weeping. There are times of rejoicing. And every day there's a time that we ought to be considerate for one another. Go ahead, Coach. Yeah, yeah. So again, remember that we are reflectors of Christ. Uh, and if we really uh, uh, demonstrate that, uh, uh, the world would be so much better. Uh, our our whole lives would be better uh, if we would just uh, be reflectors of Christ uh, uh, and let people. So so then people will begin to ask the question, uh, "Man, what well, what's up with you? Why are you always like this? Why you all then you have an opportunity uh, to be a witness. You have an opportunity to give your testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, and, and that's what it's all about." We are supposed to be reflectors. So somebody may ask us, Man, how are you able to handle that? When that person did that to you and you didn't respond, uh, how were you able to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, and then that gives you opportunity to tell them, uh, no, uh, 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 it, it, it wasn't me. Uh, it wasn't me because I, mean, I wanted to, you know, <laughs> you, you know, just be real with them. It wasn't right. me. I wanted to go up. I wanted to act the fool. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to cut up. Uh, but 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 something within me mm -hmm. uh, keeps me uh, from doing that. 
Yeah, right, right. And then they ask, what is that? Then you tell them, it's, it's nobody but Jesus. Nobody uh, but Jesus. It's nobody but Jesus who have uh, helped me help me to hold my peace uh, in this particular situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it's important that we are reminded, and you, you'll probably hear me say this. I've been saying this all throughout the conversation and probably will continue to say, we are reflectors. We are imitators. Mm -hmm. uh, of our daddy, of our father, yes. uh, who is Christ. And then he says, let not, 17, uh, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Mm -hmm. Have careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. Mm -hmm. That's heavy there. That's heavy. Uh, do not repay evil for evil. And it's important to remember, he is still talking to believers. Mm -hmm. uh, and the believers of the church is a family. Uh, and, and as a family, uh, we are to uh, not uh, repay evil for evil. Mm -hmm. that, and again, that, that be go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, that that that, that should, he, he's trying to get it to see that should not even be in But obviously, when he was talking to believers, that was happening. Yeah. They were evil for evil. And he's like, no, no, no. Because all Paul doing, he's, he's correcting the believer here. He's correcting them from top to bottom. And he gets to this point, he says, no, don't do that. Don't, that, 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 that seed of, of should not be in you. If it is, let's go ahead and deal with it. Because we have to deal with it. God wants us to deal with get to, to, to clean us, to, to pull out the tears, you know, to pull those up out of our lives. Those things have become rooted and embedded in our lives. And, and and things trigger, you know, situations trigger, you know, the the BCU, what I call before Christ. And the right. happening. But you know, Paul, Paul Paul is dealing with the believer, like you say, he's dealing with the believers here. He says, No, don't do this. He's bringing correction. How much more would the church advance if we began as ministers began to get up and give real corrections, real mm. correcting the body, real correct correcting the believers? Like, no, this is what the world is. instead of trying to instead of trying to um, feed them all the all, all the good things. Everybody wants to hear the blessings, but in order for you to be blessed, you got to understand the correction. And, right. and Paul did not waste his time speaking to the believer when it, at, at, at this point he was like, "But no, don't, don't, don't repay evil for evil." Because God said, "Vengeance is mine." So when we turn that thing over, we know that what God is going to bring every, each and every one of us to a place of repentance. That's why yeah. we must let. And when we started this thing off last week, we, we talked about prayer. You got to be able to pray. You got to be able to pray for your enemies. So. So when you come here, Paul is giving you that correction. You need to heed to it. Even today, even today, do not repay evil for evil because it's not up to you to repay. God, God, God didn't repay. God, Jesus didn't go to the cross to repay evil for evil. He, he went to the cross that we might be saved, right? So he yeah. paid the ultimate price. He died the death. He died. How many of us leave the BC Christ in you is dead. Don't resurrect it. Let it stay dead, and let God do what He knows to do in your situation. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that takes us to eighteen and nineteen, and it says, "If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Mm -hmm. Friends, do not avenge yourself. Instead, leave room for the for God's wrath." Because it is written, vengeance belong to me, I will repay, saith the Lord. Uh, so again, we should, uh, if all possible, uh, uh, we should live at peace with everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, within our power, uh, that should be our goal, uh, to live at peace with everyone. Uh, so again, uh, so again, there's no room for grudges. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's no room for grudges, and uh, and, uh, and I'll say it this way: uh, 
their people are holding on to stuff that they don't even know why they're even holding on to it. Uh, some stuff have been transferred down mm -hmm. uh, from generation to generation to generation. And now it didn't reach that last generation where it is right now. Mm -hmm. And they were upset with a particular family because the family were mad at them. And if they ask each other why they're upset with one another, they don't have a clue. Right. But because it was passed down from genera generation to generation to generation, um, they have been, been dealing with each other. And then when they find out what it really was, they end up with really nothing. And right. then they go on and live their lives. Right. Uh, uh, it's just at best uh, to live at peace with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that that's the goal, especially for us as believers. Mm -hmm. uh, we shouldn't be at one another because when the world see us at one another, how does that represent Christ? Right. right. That's a bad representation when uh, the world looks at us and we going in on one another and they're like, hey, this is what y'all, this is what your, your, this is what your Jesus taught y'all. Uh, so again, it's got to be uh, important that we live at peace with one another, uh, with one another. But here's this big piece. He says, do not avenge yourself. And Cuz been wanting to get at this uh, for a long time. So I'm just going to pass it over to her uh, to let her get at it. Yeah. Do not do not avenge yourself, but rather give and give place under wrath. Look, don't do it. Don't think that you got to do God, God, I mean, God even tells us, right? He reminds us, Benjamin is mine, he will repent. He's letting you know, I, I can handle this. God can handle each and every one of us. We don't have to turn around and do the things and, and be vindictive. To those around us, don't vindication is does not belong to us. We are reflectors of Jesus Christ. He had the example, and he gave us his peace. So he's telling you, my peace, I'm gonna leave with you. So he's led, like y'all can live in peace because I'm leaving my peace, not as the world, because the world don't have no peace. They have this vindictive behavior, always trying to avenge one another. But as believers, we should not do that. We should not. Even again, I'm gonna use the word clicks because a lot of times clicks come into play, and it shouldn't because clicks ought to be left out there in the world because the world runs right. out of clicks. And but but when we're running in clicks, most of the time when you're in and when you're in that circle, I can guarantee you somebody is doing some stuff, saying something that should not be said, being being, being vindictive because they didn't have their way. He said, "No, don't do that." Again, I like Paul because Paul ain't wasting no words here. He is bringing correction to the body of Christ. So this is the day that anyone that's listening, take these words to, to heart and, and put a check in. Like like Cuz always says, do some self-examination. Don't do it. Don't be vindictive because at the end of the day, you are going to mess up. You are going to mess up. You know why? Because God is going to hold you accountable for what's in your heart. And he's like, you got to get this out of your heart. Don't do it. Obviously, when, when, when Paul was speaking to the believers, they were doing these things and he's seen them. And so now he's bringing correction. So today we're bringing correction. Everything that, that we will experience in life is held in this book. It's held in, this, in, in, in the Bible. It's, these 66 books cover everything that we will do. And when it comes to correction, God is always trying to correct his people. Because we should not, we should not look like the world. We should not act like the world. When I say look like the world, there ought to be a countenance about us, not not in our demeanor, in the way we treat people, in the way we handle our situations. That is what draws the unbeliever to us, because they, because we all know what it is. We all were there, struggling and frustrated, down and out, and we just want to feel like we can. Our burdens have been lifted. Well, as believers, life, don't, life ain't always pretty, but we are the ones that have to say, no, I've been, I'm not going to, I'm not going to vindicate this situation. I'm going to put it over in the hands of our Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ will take care of it. He's forever making intercession on our behalf on a daily basis. When you go down and you pray, say, Lord, 
help me, give me the wisdom that I need so that I can do it, show forth the goodness of Jesus Christ. Be the reflector and don't come into this. Don't, don't, don't do that. God comes back and says, Benjamin is mine. So take your hands off. Take your hands off and be kind. Kindness, do kindness every day. And keep it from that. When it comes to your enemies, when it comes to your your, your, your neighbor, when it comes to your neighbors, the, the greatest commandment is love, love the neighbors as yourself. If you're vindictive, you might need to check that self. You go look in the mirror and look at you. Ask the Lord to open up your heart because at the end of the day, it's you. And it, 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 it ain't them. God's just trying to bring you to a place of correction. So receive that correction so that you can walk in free. Go ahead, Cass. Yeah, yeah. And that takes us to our last two verses of, of this text. And he says, but if, if but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. <laughs> if he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Uh, do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. So again, it tells us if your enemy is hungry, uh, we ought to feed him. <laughs> uh, if somebody, uh, that, that's hungry, we have to feed him. Uh, if somebody thirsty, uh, it's up to us uh, to feed them. Uh, it's important that 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 we do this. Uh, but then again, and then again, again, I know uh, I know here in Peoria, uh, it's a lot of people who out there. Uh, uh, you as you out of uh, going about, you see people with signs of work for food and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then again, uh. You have to uh, use wisdom in certain situations. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that I do is uh, uh, if somebody's hungry, so well, I'm going to take you to get something to eat. Now, if they refuse uh, to go with me to get something to eat, then I know what they wanted that what, what they wanted it for. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, we have to use wisdom uh, in this in, in that space. Uh, and then sometimes I just give it to them anyway and just let them know if you misuse what they're supposed to give this for, uh, then, you know, you know, you, you, you are going against what God, the way, the way that God has told me to give this to you. Right. And right. when you go against God, uh, then he's going to, he's going to deal with you. So I let them know up front. Uh, but again, we have to uh, be, let the Holy Spirit lead us in those uh, in those circumstances but mm -hmm. then he, the thing part he says for in doing so you'll be heaping a fiery coal over his head mm -hmm. so uh, uh, so again what this is referring to uh is this will uh put a burning conviction yeah. that our kindness place on our enemy mm -hmm. they'll be like man uh, they'll be so convicted because of your niceness if they do wrong by you. Uh -huh. uh, the, yeah, yeah. They'll be convicted because they'll know that you gave them to get something. To, you gave it for them to get something to eat. You gave it for them to get something to drink. Uh -huh. uh, but if they go and do it somewhere else, they're going to be convicted by our kindness. Yes, yes. And that, so and, that, 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 and that really happened. That really happens. I mean, yeah. there, there, there was a situation in my life many years ago and, and just trying to help out a friend and, and, and it didn't go well, right? And the Lord had told me, he said, no, just pray for them. Pray, pray, pray this particular prayer or pray over their life. And it took many years. You know, we always want things to happen at like a drive-through experience and, mm -hmm. it don't, and it don't happen. It happens in God's timing. And, yeah. that, and, that, and as I continue to lay, lay this person at the altar, eventually that person came around and said, hey, forgive me. Because God is going to do it. He, he just told us in the previous verse, vengeance is mine. Now Paul reveals how it's going to happen. Yeah. So if it's your enemy, you do these things, you don't have to worry about it. The Holy Spirit is going to do his work. Yeah. See, a lot of times we always trying to do the we we always trying to do the work of the Holy Spirit instead of oh, that's it. Say that again, because I was go. If you didn't say it, I was gonna say it. <laughs> well, we, we, yeah, because we, yeah, we are always trying to do the work of the Holy Spirit instead of letting the Holy Spirit work. 
Because at the end of the day, God knows the beginning from the end. He knows what it's going to take. Our way, our, our place is really easy. Pray. Yeah. Pray. Pray. If you learn how to pray this word, because that's what God, I, Lord, I'm praying that you put, put, bless them. Bless my enemies. The Lord is going to make sure that that, that blessing is going to bring them to conviction. Because the only way he can bless your enemies is that they can they, they be convicted by the Holy Spirit. So we stop trying to do the work and let the Holy Spirit do the work. He's glad to do the work because he can do it. He already said it belongs to me anyway. Yeah. So go ahead and, and relinquish our will and say, Lord, let your will be done in this situation. Yeah. And come up under that conviction in our own lives. That we that we will live right before God who is holy. Go ahead, cuz. So the only way to conquer evil is with good. Uh -huh. You don't overcome evil by being evil too. Uh, and I know that's the way in our flesh we want to do it. But we have to remember God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sent for you and me. Uh -huh. Uh, and he did it so that we would become the righteousness of God and sharing in his forgiveness. And I'm going to conclude with this quote, and I'll give it to you to close us out, because uh, there's a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, and he says this, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Mm. Powerful quote. God is love and God is light. When he said it, it ain't but one person that can do it. Yeah. That's the God that created humanity. Darkness can't do it. Evil, evil can't do it. I, I and, and I know Jesus said, and we, we might get to this one day, but Jesus said, Belzebub can't cast out Belzebub. You can't. Oh, and it can't <laughs> the only thing that brings unity into the life of the believer, because again, he's talking to the believer, to the life of the believer, is love and light. Yeah. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So there's no other, there's this, this is, this is the hardest thing to actually conceive because there is still a root of that sinful nature in us all. Yeah, but today yeah. God is saying, let's let's begin to, to to shatter that and let the love and the light of Jesus Christ really push push forward. Even as we go into this season, because we're, we're we're in December, we're in the last you know month of the year where we celebrate Christmas. Let's re let's remember, you know what? When Jesus J Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. He became the light. The, the book of John starts off, you know, letting us know. The, the light was always been here. Jesus was here in the beginning. That light is still pushing forward through us today. The light and the love. You cannot overcome evil with evil. It must be about good. Why? Because God is good. That, that's who he is. And God met each of us in the depth of our sin and we know it. So let's do the right thing and live and live this thing out like we're supposed to. This is a lifestyle that Paul is presenting to us today. It's a lifestyle day in and day out, 24-7. Don't play with it. Don't 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 think you can have your way like I just said. Let yeah. the Holy Spirit do the work. The only work you need to do is pray and believe. You pray and believe. God, 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 because He God is gonna keep His word to Himself. Yeah. He started this thing out in Genesis, and He said, "If I can swear by no other, I'll swear by my own name." And He's been keeping His word ever since. Heaven and earth to pass away, but His word won't. Yeah. Guys, go ahead and bring them into the house of the Lord. Go ahead. And and, and pray that prayer for. Uh, so, 
uh, there may be somebody who is watching uh, who uh, don't have a relationship with Jesus. Uh, again, then this is a conversation from cousins from a Christian perspective. Uh, so again, uh, we uh, always, Jesus is always going to be a part of this. <laughs> that is how we are. And again, there may be somebody who is listening to us uh, or watching us who don't have a relationship. Uh, and you know, after you have heard these last couple uh, 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 of episodes, you know uh, that now is the time uh, that you need to uh, turn your life back over, turn your life over to him initially. Uh, uh, all you have to do is admit that you are a sinner uh, and that you need a savior uh, and that you made mistakes. Uh, we all made mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, all you got to do is believe that Jesus is the son of God who died on the cross for you uh, and rose on that third day. All you got to do is confess Jesus as the Lord of your life uh, and commit your life to following Jesus and serving others. And if you're willing to do that, uh, you are and will be welcome to the body of Christ. Uh, so again, there is somebody who is watching us today uh, who had a relationship with the Lord, but you know you just strayed away. Uh, your relationship is not like it should be. Uh, and you know it's time to get it together. Again, we admonish you, we encourage you uh, to do that today. Whenever you're watching it, if you're watching it morning, noon, and night, whenever you watch this or whenever you are listening to this, uh, as the Holy Spirit prick your heart, uh, obey uh, what he has said. Don't hold off for it. Don't, don't put it off. Uh, that next day is not promised. Uh, the day that you are listening to this or watching this is not promised to you that you're going to finish it. Uh, so as soon as the Holy Spirit pricks your heart, uh, we encourage you to yield to the Holy Spirit. Uh, let the Holy Spirit have his way in your life. So let us pray. Our Father, my God, we thank you. We praise you again uh, for this reminder of how we need to uh, live our lives. Uh, we ought to live our lives as genuine uh, people, caring for one another, loving for one another, uh, rejoicing when one rejoices, weep when one is weep, be considerate of one another, uh, not tearing down one another. Uh, uh, Lord, thank you for this reminder. Uh, so, Lord, help us as we go forth from this day forward uh, to live the way you want us to live. Help us, Lord, to be the reflector of you, the imitator of you, so that men, women, boys, and girls may ask us, what must I do to be saved? So we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in our lives uh, from this day forward. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We pray you have enjoyed our conversation today. Thanks for spending time with us. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. Partner with us. Like, subscribe, support. Visit our website, livingbiblehub.com. Until next time, peace, love, and blessing.